This is an interesting mazic forest on a calcareous bluff overlooking the Tom Bigby River in Alabama. It's interesting because there's a, a, there are a few species that occur here that really don't occur anywhere else or many other places in the deep south part of the coastal plain. And uh, bur oak is one of those species. Another one of those species is this one right here, Fraxinus quadrangulata. When we look at ash species in the southern coastal plain, uh, Fraxinus, white ash and green ash are the two most common. And, and they're difficult to distinguish from each other without fruits. Uh, sometimes leaf scars are helpful, but the bark and the overall structure of the leaf themselves are, are very similar. Here with Fraxinus quadrangulata, you can see there's a lot of moss growing, maybe some leafy liverworts growing on this bark, but it tends to be a little darker than some of our other ashes. It'll still have that deeply ridged furrowed bark that we see in other ash species, but maybe not quite so much as in the other two that are common. What really sets Fraxinus quadrangulata apart from our other ash species it, are the stems. The stems are quite distinctive, quite unique. Here you can see this stem, I want to kind of rotate it so you can fully see it, has four corky wings making the stems somewhat square in nature. Even on the young stems you can kind of see that forming. So somewhat square stems, or at least superficially square with these, these corky ridges. We don't have anything else that looks like that, much less another ash. So this is going to make it Fraxinus quadrangulated. The leaves themselves are pretty much like any other ash. You know, they're going to be opposite, pinnately compound. Not a lot about the leaves that, that's particularly useful. But it's really, it's these, it's these corky uh, little wings four wings along the stem that set Fraxinus quadrangulata apart. What's interesting is typically this species really doesn't even grow down in the deep coastal plain, but we do find it in just a few relic pockets. Like you can see, we're in a nice, mazic, cool, deep ravine, and that little microhabitat allows Fraxinus quadrangulata to persist in our area.